In a previous video, I looked at how we can build software for capturing video and performing image processing on the BeagleBone. I showed how we can capture video, capture image frames, and use OpenCV to perform image processing operations under embedded Linux. The previous video is linked here, and if you want to understand exactly how I perform the tasks in this video, I would recommend that you watch that video too. This video extends the previous video by looking at video streaming on the BeagleBone Black. I have managed to get a few different types of video streaming working using the capture program that was discussed in the previous video. So this video will discuss video streaming using RTP, which is real-time transport protocol, UDP unicasting, which is user datagram protocol. Now most RTP implementations also use UDP, but they also have some high level functionality. For example, identification of the payload type, synchronization of multiple streams such as video and audio and so on. And finally, I look at UDP multicasting, which allows for one to many type connections. In all of these examples, I'll use VLC media player to display the video data. The final part of this video goes on to describe how you can build your own software implementation that can display the data. The advantage of using this is that you can add your own data processing and controlling functionality into the video display. You could even develop code for capturing multiple streams simultaneously and processing the data, for example for stereo imaging. This video is really a demonstration video. The actual technical details of each of the stages is discussed on my blog. Each section will link to the relevant blog entry and you can find further technical detail there. Okay, so here's my setup. I have my Logitech C920 here and I just have my BeagleBone. I'm using that as a subject of the video. You can see it's connected via USB and that I'm powering the BeagleBone with a five volt barrel jack and it's connected to my network into a regular uh, switch uh, over ethernet. Um, so on my desktop, I'm within my virtual box uh, and I'm just going to use this just uh, to talk to the BeagleBone just to be very clear. So I'm going to SSH into my BeagleBone, 68.1.81, logging in as root. Okay, so I'm in my BeagleBone directory and I'm just going to clone the source from my repository. So git clone git colon slash slash github dot com slash Derek Malloy slash bone cv right, you might have to use dot git as well but it seems to be okay so I have my directory go into my bone cv directory and you'll see that this is the this is the version I used before I've added in a few scripts so this is the bone cv uh, computer vision and the, the the tools such as capture for for capturing an image stream and all I've done is I've written a few scripts around this uh, with help from others. So the one I'm going to work with first is the RTSP, is the RTP. So I'm going to start this up. So dot slash stream video RTP, and you'll see. Just to just check the contents of it first, and just make sure it's okay. So you can see that the effect is I'm running the capture program that I discussed in the last video. I'm forcing it, I've changed the code slightly so that uh, minus C0 just means an infinite number of frames. I'm running this into avconv or ffmpeg, it's, a, it's well, more or less the same. And re means that we're, we're reading the input at the native frame rate, which is around 30 frames per second. Minus i minus was tricky to find is to take the input from the pipe so that means it's coming from capture vid codec copy that's coming from it means that we don't transcode the video this c920 outputs in full hd so we just want to use it we don't want to transcode into another format that would be overly taxing on the beagle bone minus f then says that we are forcing it to be sent to an rtp stream so we're forcing RTP output and we're directing it to my computer, my PC, which is on 192.168.1.4 and chosen at random, we're using port 1234. So we'll execute this and we'll see dot slash uh, stream video RTP. And that goes off. And you'll see, I, I discuss in my blog how to generate an or, uh, 
the, the file that we need from this, the STP file, effectively you need to copy this contents here into a file. So I've done that already and I've transferred that file as I did in my blog, I'll link the blog to the video here. And these contents um, describe the stream. So they describe that it's going to be an input input IP4 stream, it's going to be sent to this, this um, address and it's going to come in on port 1234. So within, on my computer I have a file beaglebone rtp stream.stp so I'm just going to open this. So I just open this stream I just cancel for a second. So I'm within my VLC media open file. So my desktop is called beaglebone rtp stream.stp and this is what happens. So we get a stream, just change the size a little bit so it fits on the video. And initially it's corrupt because it has to get the frame. The, so you can either leave it and it'll find the keyframe and then the video quality is good at, from this point on. So you can see this is live video that's coming from the BeagleBone camera. And you can see that uh, as, I, as I move the camera around a little bit, you'll see that there's delay but you'll see that um, clearly it's live video. Now I'm capturing this video with Camtasia, so it, it probably doesn't do it full justice. It's, it's got a very good frame rate. And you can see there's a delay because if I move my hand, I have the video synchronized. So I have a video of a video. If I put my hand in front and take my hand away, you'll see there's a slight delay um, in, in this happening. Over here, i uh, just minimize this a little bit more. You can see it working away. So you can see, um, just pop VLC back open again. You can see that it's running frames 3000 whatever, it's 30 frames per second. The size is that, the time is that, the bit rate is uh, around three, uh, three megabits per second, which is very good. So that's, that's my RTP stream and it's working very well. Um, it's good quality if I I'll, I'll, I'll maximize it. Let's just maximize it within the frame for the video record. And you can see um, that it's oh, that's too big. Try again. I don't want to make any bigger. So you can see that it's a good, it's a good size quality frame. Um, it's not bad. I'll put my hand in front of it so you can see the change. It's, the camera has an out of focus so you can see it comes into focus. If I let it go again, take my hand away, you can see it goes back into focus again. So it's a good, it's a good quality camera. The light is a little bit dark here at the moment, so you can see that maybe it, it's, um, it's clear. You can see the lens has a, an active element in it. So it's working quite well. So you point at the monitor in, you can see the delay. If I put my hand in front, oh, that's not bad. That's very quick. Delay is, is quite small. Try it again. Let's see if I can measure the delay. So it's not the delay here. I suppose I'm on a I'm on a, a local network, um, but you can see there's a very small delay between the two, um, and it it appears to be uh, quite effective at stream taking in encoding the video and sending it out. So if I kill this stream, we can also we can also use um, the UDP. Okay, that's the right address. So, so we can stream this using UDP. And the advantage of this is that within VLC, we don't need the file anymore. Um, it's, uh, it just means we can open it up directly. So we can go media, open, open network stream. And we get our pop-up box here and we can open and we can say UDP colon slash slash at 1234. That's all we need to know. So effectively, it's a little bit strange. Again, remember, this is the Beagle Bone. Um, and this is the program running on the Beagle Bone. And it specifies the IP address of the viewing machine. And that's a little bit strange. But that means that on this machine, effectively, the stream is being sent to us at port 1234. Uh, so we just open up UDP at 1234 and we can just play this directly. And there we go. You can see that that stream is not yet working. Okay, give me a second. Now, 
So you can see there's a slightly bigger delay on this stream at the moment. <laughs> In fact, it's a massive delay at the moment. There we go. It's, it's jumped itself. Um, so we're back up to about a, a one to two second delay. Um, just to put this up on my hand in front again, just so you can see, and you see the delay. So it's a larger delay on UDP. I've noticed that consistently larger delay on UDP, um, but it, it's, um, it's useful in that you don't need to distribute the configuration file to the, um, to the stream. And you can see the quality to, to the viewer, and you can see the quality is very good too. It's, it's just as good um, as the camera. So it works very well. Um, no issues with that. Um, the other way we can do this, I'll just hit stop, hopefully it'll work. Another way we can do this is to use multicast. And multicast is effectively, we specify, you have to find the multicast uh, address for your network. And you can see that on my network, I'm using UDP and I'm saying that uh, Again, with my UDP, I, I said that it's within a um, MPEG transport stream. I'm using UDP 226.0.0.1 at port 1234. Now, the advantage of this is that we can um, view this on multiple computers at the same time. So multi-stream, uh, multi. So it starts up the same way as before for UDP. And we can open it up, we can open up VLC and we can open the address directly. Open network stream, again this is on my PC. So it's at, and the address is, um, you can see it here, 226001. Mistake there. UDP 226 at 226001. Okay, and there we go, we've got our stream. And um, to, to see the effect of this, again, you can see it's taking time for it to kick in. And it's out by about the same, about, by about one to two seconds. Um, put my hand in front, oops. Oh, it's not, it's not yet. Hold on, now it's out by one to two seconds. Hand in front, hand away, okay. So it just seems to, after a little while, it just seems to uh, synchronize a little bit more closely. I suppose that's the benefit of UDP, is it will just throw away the data. Okay, so that's the network stream, that's multicast. Now, the benefit here is if you have multiple computers, I don't know if I can open up. So I'm gonna open up a second instance of VLC. Uh, open network stream. And I can open uh, at 226.0.0.1 and you can see now I've got a second stream now it, it doesn't really matter you can see hopefully this is two streams from the one I'm, I'm playing it with two different players and if I just reduce the sizes down you can see hopefully they'll they'll synchronize a bit in a as soon as they uh, there so now they're synchronized so let me try and move my hand in front of them. So effectively, this could be multi. Uh, this is multicast, and this is showing that multicast is working because we wouldn't be able to do this with with a unicast uh, with two different streams. And you saw that we can hand in front. You can see that both streams are perfectly synchronized. And I've tried this on different computers on my network and it with my laptop, and it all works perfectly. So I do have real multicast happening on the network. And you can see that it works very well. So that's a, a useful feature. Again, the quality is preserved and everything's synchronized. This would be very good for uh, robotic applications where you want to have multiple uh, output view, viewing outputs. Okay, so that's covered the different setups. So you can see on my blog, I've covered UD, UDP, unicast, multicast, and, and streaming video using RTP. So I've covered those those topics. and. We're using effectively the capture program that's been sent into FFmpeg MPEG or AVConf. And, and then I'm using VLC as the player for playing this. Now, it is a little bit restrictive to be playing the video into a, a media player because 
it may be the case that we want to do something with the data, such as process the data, or use it to navigate a robot, for example, where we want to have controls. So playing into a player is a little bit restrictive. What I want to do now is to look at different alternatives on how we can actually capture this data stream within an application, a remote application that's different, from, that's away from our, our BeagleBone. And to do this, I've looked at a few different options. I'm just going to kill this so that it doesn't get in the way. And two that have worked very well for me, well, the first one is one called VLC Wrapper. And effectively, it uses libvlc, and I've managed to build this using Visual Studio. And it, and it works perfectly. It's a, it's a, the way it's set up here, it looks like it's for playing local files, but you can also connect using your SDP file and, and, and connect to the stream because it is using VLC to do that. So VLC is taking care of that behind. So for both of these applications, you need to download and install uh, VLC and the developer version. So that's available from download.videolan.org slash pub VLC. And I'll go through this in my blog, so there's no need to, to, to spend too much time on this. But you can see here the different versions of VLC for Windows and the libraries are there. So VLC wrapper wraps those libraries and allows us to build applications. So here, for example, I've built this, uh, I've built this for my for, for just to show it running. Uh, so here's my VLC uh, dialog demo. It's the code from that website. And you can see within the readme, there are a few steps you have to go through. You have to go and copy all the plugins. Now, the plugins directory is really important. That's full of DLLs. So you have to make sure that's present. This one uses Lua. And you need to have your lib VLC core uh, and you'll get those and, it, and then run it. And it, it works. It works straight out of the box once you do those things. So here's a VLC dialog and you can open a file with this and the file I'm going to open is my RTP stream, my STP file, which was the same one as I used earlier. And you can see when we open this, it'll allow us to connect to the stream. You get the same blocky effects. You can either put your hand in front of the video to clear it. Um, I nearly cleared it or you can just wait till it, it goes to the next keyframe. So you can see here, this is the same quality as we had with the um, uh, VLC player. It's the, well, it's the same, it's the exact same thing we've just encapsulated. But obviously this would allow us then within Visual Studio, I've, I have built this using Visual Studio. It does allow you to add controls and to add new, new features to the stream. It would also allow you to have multiple displays and so on. So I found VLC dialog uh, works very well. Uh, there is another option that, and um, this is the one I preferred and I'll just open it up in the website. It's, I'll talk about how to set this up. It's, it's VLC Qt. And I, I like Qt because I think that it's a very good set of libraries to wrap around C++ that work very well. And this projects.tano.si provides you with the download for a wrapper for VLC within Qt. So you download that and you end up with a project. Um, let me just get the project. Um, so here's the project, VLC Qt. And you can see that you have your source uh, with all the source for all, everything to do with the li uh, library. You have the library, the DLL for Qt widgets and, and libvlc Qt. And it also comes with a couple of, 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 of um, demonstrations, the include for the include files for all these. And it's a, it's a lovely wrapper because it has all the functionality that you would want to break out to control the video stream. Uh, within this, I've built, uh, and I'll just show you the um, Qt project, the demo. Uh, so here's the, the demo that um, was built. Again, all credit to the author. It's, it's nothing, I'm just have this working. Just make sure, and I'll talk about this in the, in the blog, that you set up your libs and include path to where you have the library. Uh, so minus L and then the path for where the libraries are and that you want to include Qt and the widgets. And also, if you're using the new version of Qt, that you need to you need to include the widgets um, uh, library. So you also have the include path. So with this here, we can we can execute this. This allows us to build our demo player. So I can change this to stop stop stream, and Qt Qt allows us to do things like this. And I can call it open local file open URL. Um, 
for this, I'm just going to I'm just going to show it with UDP or a multicast UDP. Uh, so I'll kill this and uh, that's a stream multi. Like my cute project back open again. And again, you have to be a little bit careful with this, and I'll go through this in the blog on how I set it up. But you have to make sure that um, when you build this. I have my build. You have to make sure that in your release directory, or in, in this case, my debug is my release. I have to place my libraries and the plugins folder. Again, that's very important um, because you'll see in here, it's all DLLs. So you either have to have those in your path or you have to make them available for the code. Otherwise it won't be able to find, uh, it won't be able to find them. So um, that's my libvlc and it, it's, it's present there. So within that directory, uh, I have my build, so I can just simply go out here and execute this directly. Again, this is on my PC. So it builds it, and there's my application. There are a few errors that I haven't tidied up yet, um, but you can see that it is tying directly to libvlc, and it's using version 2.00, two flower in this case, of uh, VLC. So in this case here, I can minimize the uh, cute environment and you can see I'm running again on 226 001 port 1234 so I'm going to open that URL that should have popped up over here UDP call and slash slash at uh, 226.0.0.1 port 1234 open it up So I've just renamed it just to show it. But again, this is now has full access to the multicast and you can see that I can stop the stream and I can build controls and you can see I've called stop stream. So it gives us full control over the user interface within a Qt environment, which is a really good way to wrap uh, code. There are other examples where you can have multiple streams open at the same time um, that are made available. So all the, there's plenty of source code there to work with and it's a great library and uh, it, I'd r I highly recommend it. It works very well in streaming the data. Uh, I can put my hand in front of the stream so you can see that it's a live stream. And there, there, are, other first, there are other applications that come with that as well. So it works very well and I'd recommend it as a good container for VLC so that you can build your application to control your robot, to record your video, to have multiple video streams for stereo or many streams for vehicle applications or whatever type of applications you need.